Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to TechPoint. Today our guest is Daria from Support Your App. Hello. Hi Christian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Excited to, to meet you. Uh, please tell us more about your company. Sure. So as you said, I'm from Support Your App. Support Your App is a SaaS company, but in another definition way as a SaaS, because we do, it's a support as a service. So we provide mm -hmm customer and technical support for other IT companies all over the world uh, in 55 languages. Well, <laughs> so that's the biggest problem that you solve, you outsource uh, support. So I would say that the biggest challenge and problem that we solve to our clients, um, it's, I would say, scalability. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine you're launching a um, product or you're launching a service using, I, would, I don't know, product hunt or like a huge marketing campaign and then you have many many requests of your users whether it's potential clients or it's existing clients asking you questions about these new features or about the product itself 24 7 so mm -hmm. The user base can be from different uh, different countries, and here we are. Uh, basically, we solve this problem, this challenge. We provide our services twenty four seven, three hundred sixty five <laughs> days a week, a, a year, and in fifty five wow. languages. Yeah, so I would say that it's basically yeah, the main focus for us. Well, wow. so. SaaS, but uh, support as a service. Yes, support as a service, <laughs> I, correct. I like the definition, I like the definition. Thank uh, you. So what services do you offer? What so, are the, the type of, yeah. Yeah, I would say that the biggest part for uh, within our scope of services that we provide, it's customer success and customer support services. Mm -hmm. We also do technical support, whether it's different levels. It could be level one, level two, level three. We can also do KYC services as well as the data entry or data annotation services. So everything that is uh, basically uh, BPO services, business process outsourcing. So that's, that's what we do. So what, why do you think companies should outsource their support? Because there are a lot of companies that uh, say that uh, they, they should make their brand and uh, yeah, they treat their customers their own way. What's your take on this? What's your view on this? Yeah, we didn't say that we are just, um, you know, like a, another company for our clients. I would say that we an extension for their internal teams. Okay. Because sometimes we work very close with our internal support teams as well. For instance, mm -hmm. they could have level three support, very technical uh, customer or technical support team in-house. However, for 80% of requests, they don't need to have like this sophisticated team. That is why we always say that we kind of um, extension to their existing team. And we always work as a partners because there are many, many processes that we can improve only working side by side. I now understand. So yeah, there are different level of support. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. You know, but there is, there are, every client is unique. For some of our clients, we can, yeah, I would say that we take care of 100% of uh, their support um, um, operations. But for some of our clients, it could be like only 60 or 70%. It really depends on the, on their size, on their requirements. Mm -hmm. And can you share with us some pricing plans or how does, does your pricing work? <laughs> yeah, it's a very complex question and you know, you, you can't always answer if it comes to not a product that you can purchase online, yes. but to the, to the service. Uh, yeah. And there are <laughs> many, many criteria that really, you know, they have impact on price structure. Again, mm -hmm. the, the team size, where, whether you need one person or 100 people, Again, languages. Maybe you need Hebrew speaking person. Maybe you need to have a Japanese speaking person or bilingual, for instance, German and English. Again, oh. the the prices for them will be also um, differ. Or also whether it's twenty four seven or business hours or extension to business hours hmm. or night shifts. And again, yes. wh whether it's with a technical background or 
just a customer uh, care level one where you need to have, let's say, um, the skill set will be more on based on soft skills like empathy rather than on technical background. So taking well, into account yeah. all these criteria, yeah. we always then um, give a proposal and try to make it tailor, tailor brand. Mm -hmm. And how big is your team? Currently, we have more than 1000 people. Wow. So I would say closer to 1200 already. <laughs> wow. And um, uh, do you also hire freelancers as, a, as translators or how does it work? No, do you prefer uh, hiring them internally or? Yeah, we have our people internally because we mm -hmm. have our internal different procedures. For instance, uh, before the person joins our team, of course, we have the uh, interviews. And it's not yes. only one interview, we have different uh, stages of, the, uh, of in the, these interviews. So we have uh, two interviews at least. And then mm -hmm. for some of our clients, we also have, I would say, interviews with our clients because clients would like to know, okay, uh, whom are we gonna, gonna work with? So then we have like this extra uh, interview process, let's say interview stage. When, let's say we agreed to work with a person and the person says, okay, I, I will be happy to join your team. Then we ha again have the KYC procedure to make sure that yeah. this person mm, loyal in terms of, um, you know, like carrying information because sometimes we work with the FinTech industry and we have access to sensitive data or financial data. So that is why we need to make sure that people that we work with, that they, we can rely on them. Absolutely, absolutely. And how do you manage all these people? <laughs> it seems oh. amazing. I don't know, can you share with us some tips or some key learnings of, of yours? <laughs> you know, Christian, you know, like um, I, I, I founded this company together with my partner 12 years ago. But mm -hmm. every year, every month, I would say there is something you also you know, you, you learn basically about people, <laughs> about managing. <laughs> and unfortunately, there is no silver bullet, bullet to manage those people. But yes. I, what I think, you know, like, again, based on this experience and years that, that we've been growing, um, that you need to be, um, again, an example for your people. You can't um, tell them that your company has values. If you do not, um, let's say, you do not feel those values on your own, and uh, as well as other things like a very like basic things like respect or how you talk to people, or if we are talking about service orientation, or if we're talking about like client first, you need also show like how you uh, your your attitude is towards the clients, and many more. So there, there are many different practices techniques. But I would say that, again, um, there are Lead by mu example. much more yeah, and much more yeah. to, to, to have in the future. But also what I think that is really a good thing it's I'm and I'm keen about it. I love it. Uh, it's basically just the simple instructions. We call it them SOPs, it's standard operations procedures. But if okay. we have some process processes inside, I always try to make sure that our team, you know, writes everything down. Because if we're going to grow again, we we, we were talking about scalability. You don't need to, you know, like ask someone to spend time with you and explain how everything works. You have everything on paper. Yes. So it's something that I really like. And we have many of those documents because they really help us. And, um, uh, and many, many, many different things as well. So long term thinking and a quick question. Can you share with us the software that you use to, to keep all those documents together? Yeah, so basically we do not use like uh, the different software. We just use an enterprise uh, account for Google basically. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to have this uh, like, you know, like different folders, all this SOPs content in one place. Of course, for our clients, we use, uh, we've previously we used Wiki 
uh, for creating knowledge base. Currently, we mm -hmm. use Bookstacks. Uh, some of our teams, they use Notion. So it also depends yes. on the, our clients' preferences, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, when did you start the company? In 2010. So basically, on the 1st of October, we will turn 12 years. Wow. And currently, by the way, we have two more spin-offs. We have uh, two more companies. And okay. as, a, as you know, like the name of our companies support your app, but we also mm -hmm. have company um, that basically the company does annotation services for a mm -hmm. AI and computer vision and NLP. So the company called Label Your Data. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. the third company, it's Outstuff Your Team. <laughs> and it's for outstaffing developers already for yeah. uh, for other uh, for, for for other IT companies. So very you know like similar names uh, everywhere is it's your. A <laughs> yeah, yeah. Support yeah. your app, label your data, outstaff your team. And why did you start your company, or what was the idea behind it? Um, Twelve years ago, to be honest, I didn't have any idea at all. I was a mm -hmm. student. I was very, very young, and um, but I knew that I want to grow. I knew that I want to develop myself and mm -hmm. become a new version of myself as well. Twelve years ago, uh, basically, I came to work to customer support department of uh, one IT company, mm -hmm. and you know, like it just happens like this. So also, one friend of our, of this company where I was a customer support representative came okay. to us and asked, okay, guys, um, you already have 24 seven support team. We are launching our product to the USA market and we didn't have phone support. Can you please help us with this like application? <laughs> yes. And we said like, yes, but we even couldn't, you know, like figure out what kind of price model should we suggest? how we can like organize everything but we just mm -hmm. said yes and by the way this client um, has been working with us for 12 years already and the company is called macpaw they have this application clean my mac mm -hmm. if you if you have mac probably you try them because they're very well known they have many other applications right now but yeah back 12 years ago clean my mac oh. was one of our first client <laughs> Amazing story. And uh, was this your first startup? Yes. Um, yes. And I would say that it's the, uh, the startup and the company itself was growing like very lean. Mm -hmm. So um, we just bootstrapped and I couldn't say that we grow very rapidly. Uh, I would say that to have first 100 people in the team, it took us about four or five years. But wow. after that, you know, yes. when we already became, um, I, I would say solid in terms of like understanding the processes, <laughs> we already started growing and started working with more like well-known, bigger companies that everyone knows right now. Okay. And have you raised any funds? Um, we didn't like raise the funds uh, in imagination of when you imagine like investors and funds. Uh, back again, 12, 10 years ago, we also started creating, developing our own software. It's mm -hmm. our own CRM system for managing like phone calls, emails and live chats. So for that purpose, we raised um, uh, amount of money, but in Two, I would say two, three years. Yeah, uh, within these two, three years, when we basically raised those money, we returned them back. Ah, okay. So <laughs> basically, I, yeah. I can say or couldn't say that we you, you raised. Can, you can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then we returned them back because we wanted to, to take back our shares of the company. Back equity, yes. Yes. And, and they accepted uh, the, the same amount? No, no we, we gave more, we gave more, ah, of okay. course, with the interest, with the interest, yeah. of course, yeah. it's business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, I think it, it was a good, good, good deal for both sides anyway. And also currently we have advisors. One advisor, uh, it's uh, 
Dan Engel, uh, he was a former marketing Google uh, Google marketing director for AdWords. So we also like just you know like attracted him to become our one of our advisors. But we didn't uh, raise like uh, any like serious something like that because we always try to bootstrap and reinvest right now as it's what we are doing right now reinvesting in our ideas in the spin-offs companies like Label Data or Art Stuff Your Team. Super, super. And do you have any advice for uh, companies that want to attract advisors? Um, if the if the company would like to attract advisors, they I would recommend to start attracting them beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, even Before then, uh, you know, before even they would think that there is a point to attracting money, like. Uh, earlier in advance because yes. usually when you need the money you can you know like decrease the price because there is a, like an emergency of uh, raising some money so you always need to have a good relationship with the advisors with the, all these venture, venture f f firms and uh, other organizations or even it's an angel investors for instance and, and also it's a difficult it's easy to say like find your um, differentiation point but you need to, to really find why, why your company or your product, your service it would be better, better than competitors. It's okay then, if, for instance, you have like a product that is, you know, you, that someone else have this is, has the same company, but you need to understand why your product will be better. So it's something that I, I think it's very important. And the last but not least, it's the team. Also, what I figure out is very, very important for founders, uh, for investors uh, to understand that the founders, um, they have very good relationship between, you know, like each other, yes. as well as um, they, they don't have other focuses. Founders should focus only on this project because sometimes I also met some, you know, like very young startups <laughs> and they were like reaching out to me and said like, okay, can you invest money? And I do have some, you know, like uh, companies that I also invested um, something in into them because I realized that, okay, here I can give my um, advisorship, I can give my mentorship, but I see that these people, they basically leave these companies, they don't have like side projects, side yeah. jobs or something like that. So it's also very, very important. Yeah. Great, great answer. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> and in, in these uh, 12 years, what is your biggest challenge at the, at the company? You know, I always say, I think I always say the same, uh, the same answer to this question. Um, okay. <laughs> I think it's it really key, key, key keeps the same because my motivation it's also my challenge and it's basically people when okay. you know like my team my, when my team has um some successes i'm super proud and i super super happy and i'm super motivated as well but again sometimes <laughs> when my team has some fails or something's going on wrong I, it's all of, always for me kind of challenge, retain people, you know, manage people, uh, ask or make people think on their own and make decision on their own. It, it is difficult. Yeah, uh, you're obviously an international company, but uh, you're from Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, mm -hmm. as, uh, as you mentioned, has the war uh, affected you in any way? Of course it has. Uh, it's still, you know, like in process uh, because you can't, you know, like leave and do not think about it. I'm currently in Kiev uh, and a big part of our team also in Kiev, even though we have many different hubs all over the world. So we have hubs in Eastern Europe. We have hubs in South Africa. We have, uh, have hubs oops, in uh, South uh, America. However, mm -hmm. um, uh, the war, of course, uh, was, I couldn't say that it was not predictable. Uh, like, you know, everyone was talking about it. And we started cr even creating different business continuity plans and mm -hmm. different disaster recovery plans beforehand. But, you know, when you just, it's in theory, it's one thing. But when it's, it happens in real world, in real life, you're always like shocked uh, because it's completely different life. Uh, what I should say that, you know, like when the COVID happened uh, in 2000, 
20, I believe, in March, yeah. So we also rearranged uh, our processes and we also went online a lot. So when the war basically has started here in Ukraine on February 21st, I would say that for us, uh, we were prepared because COVID taught us, you know, like how to work, operate remotely from different uh, from different parts of the world. It's basically, yes. again, people just uh, moved away. They went to Poland, to Europe, to the USA. And we already had all the like systems, computers, laptops available for them. Uh, however, we have some clients, as I mentioned before, we have FinTech clients, for instance. They require, um, I would say, uh, secure environment. So mm -hmm. for those clients, for instance, uh, we have teams, they still work in the office and we have mm -hmm. shelters in the office. So um, because, for instance, if it's a company it's like MasterCard, we can't yes. work remotely because we have different compliances that we also uh, had in, have in place, like PCI DSS level one. We also have different certifications. So if we are talking about e-commerce projects, SaaS projects, uh, hardware companies, yeah, people can work remotely. We can give them deal and yeah. in install like VDI or DLP. But, but for some projects, we of course have infrastructure and environment in the offices. And people work in here in Kiev, in other countries and cities, they, they still work uh, from, from offices. But the war, of course, uh, impact we have had have has a huge impact to all of us. But I would also say that we became very um, organized and united in terms of uh, yes. what we do right now, what even goals and aims uh, we put till the end of the year, because we have a lot to, 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 to get this victory, you know, because yes. we really, we really believe that we will win. So we're trying to do everything possible and impossible. And one of the very important thing, it's a continue given the opportunity of giving you know, like a work, a jobs to, to, yes. to our people, because they, they yes. have families. And if, of course, they lost, let's say, job, that will be very difficult for them. That's why we are eager in what we're doing and trying to, yeah, to make sure that they have job tomorrow in one month. <laughs> and whenever, whether they live here in Kiev or in, in other cities. Yeah, every situation, every bad situation has a, a, a good thing in it. And uh, yeah, this certainly made you... Stronger. Yeah, stronger, stronger. Yeah. And Ukraine, it's definitely a very brave nation. And uh, yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, like, uh, I have no comments but, uh, about it. I'm, I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, only if you want to answer. But why didn't you choose to move for your sp own, own personal safety? You know, I moved in the beginning for one and a half months. And mm -hmm. when we in Kiev, especially in the in the capital, uh, the very like the closest cities were deoccupied. I came back. Um, I just love this city. I love country and uh, every you know like my family, every person who I really love, and uh, my relatives. They basically they are, they stayed here. Yes. So that is why um, I decided to came back. And uh, um, that's fine for, for, for families who also, uh, let's say, move to other countries, maybe because they have uh, kids or, or something like that. Uh, I don't have kids yet. That's why I decided that I came back. If something would happen again, like very bad, it closer to, the, to Kiev, uh, yeah. then I would just, you know, like uh, sit in my car and I will drive somewhere else. But uh, because I have this... Yeah. Uh, um, Things are now would, safe. Yeah, yeah, flexibility, yeah. flexibility. Mm -hmm. Right now, of course, we have this, uh, oh, I would say, um, um, uh, alarms and everything like uh, all the time. But mm -hmm. people are very adaptive uh, creatures yes. and uh, we just used to it and try to find something good in very 
routine and very like original things. Yeah, I think uh, at the first time you're scared, but uh, easily you become a, uh, okay with it. You start to, to accept it. Yeah, it's, it's also hard. it's also scary yes. to be to be yes, honest absolutely. to to accept this this, situa- <laughs> this situation itself because you understand that okay uh, right now you have this situation but at least at least it's not right exactly right here the the peak yeah. of the situation so yeah, yeah. and well, again I, um, I think uh, people's emotions were also extreme so uh, the first day is scary after that will beat them after that again I'm scared <laughs> so it's a roller yeah. coaster <laughs> it's roller coaster there are definitely different waves but I would say when you stay here uh, and you also even go to co- co- um, coffee shops or to restaurants to st- grocery stores you also help economy if everyone yes. will move away then again you, there is no market uh, relationships and it's very very difficult to 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 help economy itself so that is why i also try to keep a small business you know to go some to buy something uh, you know like yeah because it is very important yeah those uh, were my questions on ukraine but now let's move on uh uh, i don't know more enthusiastic topics i saw that uh, you are a forbes uh, council member right yeah can you tell us uh, your experience with that yeah, I, I to be honest, I became a Forbes uh, uh, Tech Council member. I don't know, like maybe four years ago or so, and I was the first um, Ukrainian uh, woman to be accepted well. in Forbes Tech Council. I couldn't say that I use it to currently very actively, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I, you know, like, like as every community and as every um, you know, like uh, platform where you are become a member. It's totally up to you what kind of uh, benefits, what kind of pros you will get. Because yes. you can be registered, but you've never made any post. So if, if for instance, uh, it's also a recommendation. If someone will decide to go whatever, it's a Forbes Tech Council or any other um, uh, membership platforms, it's only up to this person how great contribution will be and how big impact will be and what is will be like let's say a return on investment and in in this case investment it's basically time right yeah alex our ceo is also a member of the yek uh, council and uh, yeah the benefits for us were amazing absolutely amazing and i wanted to to see how it was for you i think they're yeah. very similar forbes council but- and uh, yeah, yeah, well, Council. yeah uh, but yak it's um why combinator right oh no, yak it's, it's uh with forbes ah it's also with forbes okay from what i know so okay. we get uh, to write uh, one article a month every yeah, month yeah, yeah. in forbes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're similar yeah uh, and i also uh, saw that um, you're helping women in entrepreneurship uh, your mentor uh, you're a mentor of uh, different events and i love to i don't know to Talk, talk more about this because uh, we need to, to support that. Absolutely. I mean, like, I'm, um, I help different hackathons, uh, but not just uh, w- women directly, but uh, mm-hmm. even it's just an entrepreneurship or people who, you know, like also would like to grow their startups or companies or, um, I don't know, people who have ideas and they'd like to turn it into into the real business. So usually, uh, you know, like there are different formats. If we're talking about uh, uh, hackathons, uh, the recent ones that I took Part, it was also in Kiev, basically, and as you know, like it usually takes two, three days. Mm-hmm. And um, luckily, I am I'm, I'm a, like a member, and I'm um, uh, just helping those teams. But people who really take in part, like a small, a small startups, they spend. Uh, two, three days uh, in a row, uh, you know, like just validating their ideas. And it's great energy. It's great when you have those, sometimes even people whom you don't, you, you don't know them, uh, put in different different teams. And you also, on the other hand, you have um, experienced people with the different, different industries who can advise you, who can help you. And uh, why I like it, because you can make 
from idea MVP in just you know like no time and then to see whether you can have a like a better version or kind of prototype and to see if you can market it and if there is a target audience uh, especially for this uh, product or service because you know like there are so many ideas but sometimes there are n there is no demand for such services or products so these hackathons it's very cool uh, initiates of different uh, countries and different, again, companies or organizations to support those um, entrepreneurship spirit, I would say. So yeah. I really love it. And do you have any advice uh, for founders? Uh, for, for for young for young founders for the founders who just uh, the, the, okay yes. <laughs> you know like uh, I would say that uh, my advice will be it's never do not give up. Because, uh, t again, it's based on my experience. When I do remember, um, you know, my experience first four or five years, as I told you, they're very, very slow. And every month, every week, I was telling myself that, okay, one more month and that's it. One more month. <laughs> and, you know, like it's when you're knocking in, 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 in the door, someone will open you. It's, it's the same as here. If you believe in your idea, just try keeping knocking and uh, surround yourself with people who really also believe in you and think that you're doing the right things. And also, I think that uh, the second thing that I'd like also to, to advise, it's whatever happens, uh, very, very good things or very, very bad things. You know, just let it go. I mean, like, do not be very frustrated in something very, very bad is happening. And do not be like a super, 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 super happy if something good is also happening because everything is changing. So, I mean, like, you know, like you need to kind of control this um, uh, things when it's something very bad and something very good because it, <laughs> it's just like life and something can yeah. change tomorrow. Really, I, I, I see this to myself one day. I'm oh, let's go. This is amazing. And the other day, oh, I have a lot to do. I have lots to do. You it know what? Work. <laughs> you know what? People always also ask me, like, uh, uh, how you can do everything or why some frustrated or you do not frustrate it. But last couple of years, I'm telling to myself that my relationship with my companies is kind of I don't know if you can say this, but but game. So I'm playing mm -hmm. a game. I do not yes. always become frustrated, even if it's something very good is like not very. I was gonna say good or bad, but something that I I I, I let's say I haven't planned or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because I said, okay, it's 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 okay. It's like in a, in a game. You do not try to emotionally dive into all the situations. But yes. when you feel that you are tired, it's, I always also allow to myself to take a break at least a couple of days and turn off the phone because it's, <laughs> it is also very, very important. Absolutely. Yeah, we tend to have expectations. So that's that that hurts us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if you see it as a game and uh, as Gary Vee said, you need to learn how to lose and if you and uh, you need to, to like losing because it's part of the game. You cannot win every it's day. A, it's experience, you know, like you yeah. always, also someone told that you can't fail if you uh, do something. You, you are not going to fail if you do nothing. So it's like Absolutely. something <laughs> like this. If you're achieving something, of course, and you don't know how to do it. And my challenge personally, for instance, um, uh, I still have this challenge. I can't find a person who will be my mentor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. We have our, our problems. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Never, I mean, uh, like. You never get but, rid of problems. <laughs> but, I, but I'm searching, you know, because yes. I need to have this very authority person because I have very specific questions and I can find it. And I was like, okay, but people with whom I work, they're lucky because they have me. <laughs> yes, but sometimes yes, yes. I have, I'd like also to have someone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand. Yeah, uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. I, I just have one last question. What's your favorite software? I have a couple of them, to be honest. Uh, if we're talking I'd about, love to, uh, to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about, about iPhone, uh, mm -hmm. what I love, uh, it would be an application called Day One. 
it's a diary application and I have my diary from 2012. So wow. yeah, I can open it and see what I've done. Like, I don't know, eight years ago, mm -hmm. exactly in this day. And it's hmm. so cool because, um, yeah, you can reflect on, on your previous life, on, on your past. Uh, and also what I love, and I use it very often, it's craft. It's mm -hmm. also, some people use Notion, but what I like, li like and love in craft, that I can have uh, mm, different, uh, different pictures and different mm -hmm. backgrounds in my notes that I have. So I use craft uh, specifically for all my like very uh, private and my work notes. So if you would like to to have a, to make a note, I use craft application. Uh, and you already mentioned that uh, you created your own CRM, right? Yeah, we have our yes. And the other software that you use at your company, if you can share them with us. Yeah. So basically, uh, if we're talking about also CRM systems that we, for instance, use because our clients use and we know how to integrate it, we know how to work in it and we know how to optimize it. It's of course, it's Intercom, it's Freshdesk, mm -hmm. it's Groove HQ and Zendesk, for instance, and there are many more. If we're talking about like a, just a business related application, so number one will be Slack and Asana. And of course, then we already have, uh, I would say also the same notion, for instance, and uh, all like Apple related applications starting like Keynote pages uh, and so on. Thank you so much for uh, for being here. And uh, I, I loved all your answers. I love all your thinking. I'm, uh, I'm really grateful and I, I'm really confident that the community will, will love this uh, interview and they have a lot to learn. So yeah, I'm, I'm truly grateful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, for having me today. Thank you so much for your questions.